Recently I've been catching up on a lot of booktube videos and therefore a lot of booktube tag videos and I stumbled across the classics book tag which I thought would be perfect for this channel because I tend to talk about classics quite a lot here and I also read quite a few classics. So today I'm going to talk to you about classics through the classics book tag. The first question is an overhyped classic you really didn't like. I think quite a few classics I'm sure are overhyped. Um, a classic that I personally just didn't really like reading that much was The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. I read this at university and it has the proponents of everything that I should love from a novel. It's short, it's gothic, it's dramatic, it's Victorian, everything that I love and it just really fell short for me um, and I just didn't care about it that much. And it's overhyped in the way that a lot of people talk about it, a lot of people have read it, but it just really didn't spark anything in me. The thing with classics, there are books that I don't really like, like I wouldn't read for pleasure, but there are books that I find like intellectually interesting or have like a certain level of academic worth. It doesn't necessarily make them good books or books that I enjoy, but they have something to offer um, and something to learn from and I think that's why I find classics also fascinating. Viewing them almost as like a window to another world kind of thing. Um, I just really love them. That wasn't a part of the question but you got that bit for free. <laughs> Favourite time period to read about? If it was historical fiction my answer would probably be a bit different but as we're talking about classics I love to read classics that are written in kind of the late 18th century um, to the early 20th century. I love Victorian novels uh, especially but I also do like, you know, I love Virginia Woolf and Ian Forster and those kind of uh, early 20th century writing. There are certain historical events that I find fascinating. I really am interested in the trade union movement, especially in the Victorian period and the first kind of welfare bills coming in and stuff like that. So there are parts of history that I find fascinating, therefore I want to read the novels um, that were springing up around those political and social points and um, see how they were responding to that time period. One thing I'm very wary of when I'm talking about classics is that the majority of classics I read are really not diverse at all, uh, ashamedly so. Um, so when I'm talking about these time periods I'm also talking about specific places and often in England and America and predominantly England. So it's very much a white middle class uh, straight perception of what classic literature is and that is the canon that's what we need to break down together we can break down the literary canon um, but I'm very wary that it's a very specific type of literature that I'm talking about which is not very diverse. Number three is my favourite fairy tale. I haven't really read many fairy tales at all. I love Beauty and the Beast because you know I'm bookish and who doesn't love Beauty and the Beast if you were a bookish you know child growing up. Apart from Angela Carter I haven't read much retellings of fairy tales either which does surprise me because you know, fairy tales are these amazing things that often can tear down uh, capitalism, patriarchy and be dark and morbid and sensuous and can be dangerous as well. Fairy tales are amazing things but I just don't tend to read them. The one thing that just came into my mind was Goblin Market, the narrative poem by Christina Rossetti, which has like the folklorish content but is also like really sexy and phallic um, and it's all so much fun to study um, because you know those sensuous juicy berries. That's the thing I like about kind of folklore and fairy tale is that it was allowed to go in places where maybe literature shouldn't go. The next question is a book that you're embarrassed not to have read. One book I noticed that everybody else seems to have read and I haven't. I mean first of all it would be Harry Potter. I haven't read the Harry Potter series. I've read the first book, but I haven't read all of them, and I'm sure they're pretty much modern classics now. So definitely Harry Potter, but that isn't the book I was going to talk about for this question. The book I was going to talk about was To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I feel like God and his dog has read To Kill a Mockingbird, and I haven't. It's a book, especially in America, that is taught in schools, and therefore a lot of people read it, whether they're bookish or not. Um, but we didn't do it at school. Um, it's always been on my radar, obviously. The reason I started reading classics when I was young and why I wanted to read classics when I was young was because they form all these reference points um, that, you know, when I was a kid I didn't understand because I hadn't read the books. There are a lot of times culturally, obviously, where To Kill a Mockingbird is referenced um, and people are often comparing books to Kill a Mockingbird um, and I kind of get the reference but I don't because I haven't read it. So 
I want to read it so I can refer to things as being like To Kill a Mockingbird. The next question is about classics you'd like to read soon. And I think they asked for five, but I went a bit over five because in reality, my whole bookshelf is full of classics that I want to read. The bookshelf behind me is my classics bookshelf. A majority of them are ones that I haven't read yet. And they are just my constant ever-expanding TBR of classics. The first classic I like to read would be The Longest Journey by Ian e. Forster. Ian e. Forster is one of my all-time favourite writers. I love him. Howard's End is probably, you know, one of my top great favourite books of all time. But I haven't read The Longest Journey. Although this isn't a famous piece of Ian e. Forster's writing, um, Ian e. Forster actually said it was his favourite of his novels so I want to read it and the plot seems like something I would really enjoy um the only reason I haven't gotten to this yet is because I'm spacing them out he's one of my favorite writers and I'm very aware that he's dead so there will be no more novels from Ian Forster Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell I love Elizabeth Gaskell North and South is one of my favorite novels um I've also read Cranford and Mary Barton um they're okay, I find Mary Barton interesting, did my MA on that, but um, I want to read Wives and Daughters just because I actually don't know the plot of this novel at all. Same with The Longest Journey actually, and now I find it quite surprising, especially when there is an adaptation of Wives and Daughters, that I don't know the plot. So I think that will be something quite beautiful to discover because now with TV series we often do know the plots of classic novels before we start reading them, so this is one of the rare books that I know nothing about and am exciting to explore. Actually, I just realised it's the same for the next two novels, three novels, that I actually don't know what happens in them, despite there being a series of all the books. So maybe that's a thing, maybe I've read all the books that I've seen in TV adaptations and then have saved the books that I haven't watched the TV adaptations of. I feel like that's what happened. I now have a theory. So, my theory is that all of the classics that I've read have TV adaptations that I've seen, and often have seen before I read the novel. Therefore, I watched the TV adaptation, and when I loved it, now I'm going to read the book. The other books, I am now getting older and haven't read and haven't watched the TV adaptation and now I want to read them before watching or watch them alongside them. So this marks a change in how I'm reading and how I'm growing up and therefore accessing classic literature in the way that I'm often reading them rather than just watching them on TV like I would have done as a child. Middlemarch by George Eliot. I am from the Midlands and therefore George Eliot is a treasure for us of the Midlands. I know I will adore Middlemarch. I've heard nothing but good things. I've actually like read half of it various times, especially when I was younger, but just never really got into it. Um, but I know I will love it and I think this is the prettiest Penguin English Library edition ever. Another book I know nothing about but know I will love is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I'm aware that I'm not really describing the plots of these novels, one because I think a few of them will be familiar to you um, and also you can look it up because I'm always really bad at describing books to people when I haven't read the books because it would just be me reading of the blurb. I'm fascinated to read this book because it deals with um, mental illness and kind of hysteria I think and also the mystery element as well. I've mentioned previously that one of my reading goals for this year and maybe also probably next year is to read more Dickens and to read a Wilkie Collins novel. So this will be my Wilkie Collins novel. It's just a gap I have in my Victorian literature part of my brain. Um, I just haven't read any so I would like to read some. The Dickens novel I want to read is Bleak House because it's big, the plot seems really appealing to me. I also haven't watched this series of that one either um, and I really want to watch that adaptation so I'm excited to be able to read and watch them. I often love to read books alongside watching the TV series so I'll often read up to a point and then watch the like, DVD up to a point. That's kind of how I like to do, especially with classics. The last book that I want to finish is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I've been halfway through Anna Karenina for years and stopped reading. I think it's a brilliant book, but it's just, it's just very big, as I'm sure you're all aware. But I really, really want to finish reading Anna Karenina. There are so many books that I could mention. Passage to India by Ian Forster, I haven't read that either. The World of Loneliness, I'd love to read. 
Love in the Time of Cholera as well. Um, there are so many books. The sixth question is, favourite modern book or series based on a classic? I don't think I've read that many, so I'd have to say Bridget Jones, this diary. We all love Bridget Jones. I remember really enjoying the book, but I haven't read the book in such a long time, so I'd like to revisit that. But definitely Bridget Jones. Favourite movie version or TV series based on a classic? I think I have two, no I have three, no I have four, wait no, I can't, I can't do all of them. I've got to be sensible. The first one is the North and South adaptation. Uh, it's the most beautiful adaptation ever. It's perfect, so close to the book, it's beautiful. There is nothing wrong with that adaptation. Similarly, I love the Romola Gawai version of Emma. I do really like the new adaptation of Emma, but for me, it will always be that edition. The 1995 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice is the one I first watched and the one that I fell in love with. I love the most recent adaptation of Tessa Dugville's with um, Eddie Redmayne in. That is a brilliant adaptation. And there is also an adaptation from the 1990s of Far From The Red and Crowd, which I love. And it's got Nathaniel Parker in, and I think is hands down the best Far From The Red and Crowd film ever made. Um, even though I did like the Kerry Mulligan one, it's got a great, amazing cast of actors and it is really good. But for me, the adaptation of Nathaniel Parker did things to me. The worst adaptation would probably be, I think it's either a 90s or 80s adaptation of Tessa Darbles. And my mum still hates it so much and she still talks about it every time. Basically, I think the horse dies, which is the reason that Tess has to go to the Durbervilles. And it is basically the very first link in the chain of events that happens. And it sets up the entire novel. Uh, and it's, it's quite important. Or me and my mum felt it was very important. But basically, this adaptation just not included it. And I don't think my mum has recovered yet from that adaptation. The next question is about favourite types of classics in terms of like editions. The first edition has been uh, featured quite a lot in this video already. And that is the Penguin English Library editions. Not only are these books really, really beautiful, but they also are quite cheap as well. And I tend to buy classics in this edition just because then they line up really beautifully next to each other and they're also really colourful. But I love how much the design just picks up on little things from the novels that often features. And it may not be objects necessarily in the novel always, but it's just an idea or an image or something that you can come to recognise. Um, so I just think they're always done perfectly. The next edition will come as no surprise because you can see loads of them like behind me. And they are the vintage classics editions. Vintage classics are the reason I fell in love with classic literature. When I was young and I was embarrassed about reading Jane Eyre and I didn't want anybody to know I was reading Jane Eyre because I knew I'd be picked on. I wanted it to make private and vintage classics have always been amazing at creating classics that looked so modern and contemporary and appealed to me and I knew it was Jane Eyre but unless anybody saw the spine they wouldn't know it was Jane Eyre. I should make a point saying this isn't Jane Eyre, this is Ruby Fruit Jungle. But this is just brilliant book design with like a really bold contemporary cover and vintage classics do it so well every single time. The other series of classics I'm also kind of collecting are these new vintage classics ones um, and they are done by authors so different authors have different styles um, but to avoid me bringing down all of my books and showing them to you I've just picked two examples of these different styles. I am just a sucker for book editions I always have been. I've always been obsessed with buying the most beautiful book available and I do end up collecting basically my favourite books and my favourite authors books in hundreds of different editions and it makes me happy and even though Ben may not understand it's something I need to do for me. The last question is an underhyped classic that you'd like to recommend to everyone and that would be Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. I feel like so many people have read Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte but so few have read Shirley and Shirley is one of the best books ever written in English. It's Charlotte Bronte's own historical novel about the Luddites, um, it is passionate, it is political, it's about a woman in a man's world and in a man's position with a man's name. It's about gender and love and trade unions, <laughs> everything I needed in a novel. That was a lot of classics and I now have a lot of books to put away because even though I didn't actually show them all to you, I couldn't decide which books to mention so there are loads of books all around me so I need to go and tidy this away now. I hope I've inspired you to read even more classics and I'll see you in another video where I probably will also be talking about classics then too.